talk about the score which is given to the various risk factors for venous thromboembolism. Now this scoring is a very very easy scoring though it looks scary with so many things now since we have already read the risk factors in the previous images and the mnemonics which has helped us remember this chart or I would say these two charts. So once you have a grip of it remembering this table is not a problem. If you observe carefully, the scoring is very much like the color coding of this. This is the red zone and then we have the orange zone. Now if you carefully see the antenatal assessment, all the points which are there in this red box will be scored as 4. Now we are talking about the antenatal assessment. This is the most important chart you have to remember to score because when the patient comes to us she is not postnatal. She is mostly antenatal when she comes to us for treatment and assessment. So we have to start scoring with the antenatal assessment chart. So the red zone is given a score of 4 and Intermediate is given a score of 2 or 3. Mostly 3, 2 in some cases and the rest are given a score of 1. So as you can see, previous VT is given a score of 4 except a single event related to major surgery because that this special category is given a score of 3. As we know, it was under the section of intermediate risk factors. Similarly, known high risk thrombophilias and medical comorbidities, these are all intermediate risk factors, so they are scored as 3. Now we come to only two intermediate factors are those which are given a score of 2 and both of these are taken from the postnatal chart. As you can see, cesarean section in labor was an intermediate risk factor in the postnatal assessment. Of course, it cannot be antenatal. And a BMI, BMI if you see, more than 40 was again an intermediate risk factors in the postnatal. So only two risk factors, intermediate risk factors are given a score of 2. Apart from these two points and both of these intermediate risk factors are from the chart of the Postnatal assessment if you see BMI, cesarean section in labor and postnatal assessment. So, intermediate risk factors which are exclusive for the postnatal assessment, they are given a score of 2 and antenatal intermediate risk factors are all given a score of 3. And remaining factors, they are given a score of 1. So we have very easily covered what the scoring is for every risk factors. Now we come to transient risk, risk factors. Now transient risk factors are for transient situations. Like if a patient is suddenly admitted for some surgical procedure in pregnancy or in puerperium. Now that doesn't mean that an immediate repair of the perineum is also a surgical procedure. An immediate repair of the perineum is excluded from this category. Any other surgical procedure in pregnancy of your perineum is a transient risk factor. So it will be given a score of 3. Hyperemesis, dehydration, it is again given a score of 3. These are important 
transient risk factor. And if you remember, this was also in the intermediate risk factor category. So, intermediate risk factor will be given a score of 3. Now, two other factors like systemic infection, current systemic infection, which again is associated with admission and immobility, it is given a score of 1. These are transient risk factors and if you remember, these were in the lower charts of the antenatal and postnatal assessment. Another transient risk factor, OHSS we have already discussed in the, oh my gosh, intermediate risk factor of antenatal assessment. We all know that it needs thromboprophylaxis in the first trimester and it is given a score of 4 though it is a transient risk factor. So, yes, we know once the RH is OHSS, score of 4 means the patient will be given thromboprophylaxis. So, it is understood and it is mostly given in the first trimester. Once the OHSS settles, the thromboprophylaxis can be stopped. So, the take-home message from this video is history of previous VTE, the red zone of antenatal assessment is given a score of 4. Intermediate antenatal risk factors are given a score of 3. Two special intermediate risk factors from the postnatal that is a BMI of more than 40 and cesarean section in labor. These two special postnatal exclusive risk factors are given a score of 2. Rest antenatal risk factors are given a score of 3. Intermediate risk factors are given a score of 3. So, 3 and 2 is for the intermediate risk factors, 4 is for the high risk and others will fall into the category of 1. Apart from this, we have to remember the intermediate risk factors which are transient in the respective tables and we have to score it as 3. Intermediate risk factors are always 3 except two postnatal intermediate risk factors that is cesarean section in labor and BMI of more than 40 which is given a score of 2. So, 4, 3, 2, 1. Very easy to remember. The only crux of this feed of this table is the intermediate risk factors which are given a score of 3 except cesarean section in labor and a BMI of more than 40. So, it's a very, very easy chart and this concludes our discussion for thromboprophylaxis and venous thromboembolism. Thank you.